Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll talk about starting your smart home. Suppose you are new to the smart home scene and you don't have any de devices. Where to begin? Well, you don't need a whole lot of money to start a smart home. You can start in little steps and keep adding like I did it three years ago when I started playing with the idea of smart home. So let's see where to start. Probably the biggest part of smart homers smart lights, which is good since the lights mostly operate through Wi-Fi and you don't need any other equipment to get them going. You can just buy a smart bulb and put it in your existing lamp and you're good to go. Supposing you have Wi-Fi router and a smartphone, who doesn't? Just go to AliExpress, order a Yeelight smart bulb and voila, you have already started your smart home. Let's see what's available. The simplest item is a Yeelite Smart Bulb. There are two types, white and color, and they retail for around 20 US dollars. Put it in the place of your regular bulb, install the Yeelite app or Mi Home app on your smartphone, either Android or iPhone, connect it to the Wi-Fi, and you're now able to control your light from your smartphone, either from home or away from home. If you own a Google Home or Google Home Mini, you can le link your Yeelight account to Google Home and control your bulb, bulb by voice. Just say, hey Google, turn on the lamp. Even if you don't have Google Home, you can use your smartphone to issue voice commands to the bulb. Or you can add LED strip, which also operates on Wi-Fi. There are two types. First generation LED strip, which is 2 meters long or newer so-called Aurora light LED strip, or sometimes called LED strip plus, which can be extended with one meter extensions to up to eight meters. Then there are several models of bedside lamps. For instance, first generation bedside lamp and two second generation bedside lamp models. Also, there are several models of desk lamps for your work desk. There are also quite a few ceiling lights, and you can choose by design, lumens, size, or features. They all work by Wi-Fi, and some like the 650 model, or this light called the Meteorite, even have ambient light. Most of the ceiling lights also come with a BLE remote controller, and there is a wired or wireless Yeelight dimmer, which works with these ceiling lights. Lamps don't need any additional hardware in order to work. But in time, you'll see that using your smartphone or voice is not the most convenient way of controlling the lights. Of course, sometimes it comes in handy. For instance, if you're lying in bed and want to turn off all the lights, you can do so just by saying, hey Google, turn off all the lights without getting out of bed. But sometimes the classic wall switch would be more practical. And this is when things start getting serious. Since the switches and other stuff, which we'll show, don't work on Wi-Fi, there is another thing that you will need. You see, in order to make it as simple as possible to install the switches and sensors, they all work on battery. Mostly, you just stick them onto the wall with self-adhesive tape and they're ready to be used. These devices use special protocol that is optimized to save battery and each device can operate between 1 and 3 years on battery. This protocol is called ZigBee. And in order to use it, you need a thing called a ZigBee Gateway or ZigBee Hub. Xiaomi has like three different gateways, but we'll concentrate on two mostly used. They are the second generation hub, also called Mi Hub, and third generation hub called the Multi Hub, since it also supports other stuff like BLE Gateway. Second generation hub has its advantages because apart from hub, it also has light sensor, night light and a speaker, which can sound various alerts and even be used to listen to the internet radio. The third generation supports new Zigbee 3.0, but doesn't have either neither lights nor speaker. Also, there are not many Zigbee 3.0 devices at the current time. Actually, there is only one. 
So I think it is still safe bet to buy the second generation hub and in a year or so when there are more, more Zigbee 3.0 devices you can just add the third generation hub. These are not so expensive, they can be bought on AliExpress for around 25 US dollars. Getting the hub, you open your smart home to a whole new experience of adding switches and sensors. The advantage is also that you can gradually add sensors and not spend too much money at once. You just buy a couple of sensors every month as they are relatively inexpensive with prices from just at around 10 up to 35 US dollars. Now let's see what's available. First thing that makes sense, as I already stated, are the wireless switches. These also operate on battery and all you have to do is stick them onto a wall. There are one or two rocker switches. There are several other types, but I'd really recommend Okara wireless switches since they look mostly like regular switches and work better than the others. There is also slightly less expensive Okara button, Mi round button, and the new Akara Opla magnetic switches, which have a choice of two, four, and six rockers. These have the advantage that you can just take them off the wall and put them on your desk or near bed. And if you want to use them as classical wall switches, you can just put them back onto a wall they are held by magnet. Now that you have equipped your home with switches, you can go to the next level. First thing that you will find very useful are the motion sensors, or as Xiaomi calls them, human body sensors. Don't worry, they work with cats as well, if they're close enough. With these you can make automations so that, for instance, when there is motion, your light turns on, or you get notifications on your mobile, or when there is no motion for two minutes, the light turns off, or whatever else you can think of. Second thing that is pretty useful is door or windows sensor. These can also trigger actions such as notifications, alarm, etc. There are two types, Mija and Akara, and they're absolutely the same except for design. Next thing are the vibration and tilt sensors. You can put these onto the windows so you know when they're opened or when vibration is detected. That could mean that someone is trying to get into your home by breaking the window. Another cool sensor is the temperature and humidity sensor. There are also two types, Mija, round ones, and Akara, square ones. And I'd recommend the Akara sensors since they also measure air pressure. Speaking of Zigbee 3.0 devices, as I mentioned earlier, this is the first and only Zigbee 3 device, the light sensor. It measures the light in the room in lux, so you can decide if you want to turn on the light or not, depending on the light conditions. You need the third generation gateway for this one. And as far as security is concerned, the most important thing is probably smoke sensor. This is a bit more expensive at around 35 US dollars, it works in battery and when linked to your hub it can send you the notifications or sound audible alarm when smoke is detected. There are three levels of sensitivity you can set, but even with the highest level whenever I make hamburgers it gets triggered. And if you use natural gas for cooking the gas sensor would come in handy. What if there is a leak? Better safe than sorry. This is the only sensor that doesn't work in battery, but requires to be constantly plugged in. Another cool device is a Kara Smart Cube, just an ordinary cube that acts as a controller for your devices. You can turn it, flip it, bang it against the table, shake it, slide it. Each movement can be assigned custom action. For instance, when I shake it, it turns off all the lights in the whole apartment. Or when I flip it, it turns on two lamps in the living room. And as far as I can tell, this covers all or at least most of the crucial sensors. Let's move on to some more expensive devices that you can add. Be careful when ordering those from AliExpress, GearBest or BrandGood, since they could end up in customs. Always choose EU Priority Line or Priority Line as a shipping method when ordering, as this guarantees that you won't pay the customs. Do you live in the city? Then you probably need the air purifier. The second generation purifier is around 200 US dollars and the replacement filter is around 30 to 40 US dollars. 
If you're a moderate user, the filter will last roughly one year, or if you use it a lot, between three and six months. Another cool thing is the smart D-Light bath heater with built-in light. Not only is it able to warm up your bathroom, but it also has ventilation, drawing, and a couple of other modes. It comes with a magnetic remote that you can stick onto the wall or take with you. It is a Wi-Fi device that doesn't require the gateway. There are several models of door locks that are part of the Xiaomi ecosystem and they allow you to open your door without any keys. Just use your fingerprint, NFC chip or Bluetooth. A great companion for these smart locks are several models of video doorbells or smart spy hole with display and built-in doorbell. What would a security system be without cameras? Luckily, there are several cameras in Xiaomi ecosystem, so there's a lot to choose from. Indoor, outdoor, on AC or on battery, ranging from as little as 20 US dollars up to around 50. You won't have a problem finding the right cam for your needs. That is about everything needed to get you going with your smart home. Of course, there are many, many more devices you can add to Xiaomi ecosystem, most of those available only in China, like smart coffee makers, smart drying rods, smart cattle, and a host of other devices and going over all of them would take too much time. I have made video for most of these devices, from unboxing to installation and how-to guides, so if you're interested in more details for any of these devices, please feel free to browse through my videos and find out more. And just a couple of more advice for the beginners. If you're buying from China, be aware that all Xiaomi devices will work only on Chinese server. If you buy locally, the devices will work only on US or European server. You can't mix Chinese and international devices. Most of the people that I know just buy from China and use Chinese server, even though it can be slower to respond at times. Since there are much more devices available from China than in uh, domestic markets. Okay, thanks for watching and if you like my channel, please subscribe.